that we started the winery at a time when there was an expansion in Livermore. Hey, it's got a wider stylistic variation than most wine. We go through the vineyard and clean out uh, the, the shade that we would prefer not to have and sometimes we'll drop fruit too if, uh, if it looks like there's too much. Uh, to and the uh, that's, why, that's why you're walking on uh, recently clipped great happily high like that. So you get okay. plenty of sun. And so that the sun's uh, reaching all the grapes and the uh, uh, leaves all have uh, good exposure and so on. Particularly astounding about the geography. Uh, but it was, it was quite a large acreage. The grapes are picked in these uh, half ton bins. And then there's an operation that we do uh, down the road at Cedar Mountain Winery where we pull the stems off the grapes. Okay, de-stemmer. The de-stemmer. Ah, they, they have uh, a real nice one. They're big. They've got a guy there that's operating it all the time and they're very gracious people. And uh, then uh, we'll press when the fermentation is nearly done. We'll press in our little Fulio press here. Oh, so that's interesting that certain pieces of equipment you work with other wineries around the region to do, but then you have your own press here. Well, we, we're kind of space limited. Yes. You know, it, if, if you get the feeling that it's a little crowded, it's, it's not a bad feeling it, or an inaccurate feeling. It, we're a little crowded. At any rate, these barrels are all full of wine that we made last harvest. And uh, you can see why I'm saying that there won't be a small expansion of our production. We, we yeah, have yes. to do something dramatic. Hello, this is Lonnie Stark of Stark Silver Creek, and we're in the barrel room here at Bent Creek Winery. And I'm here with Rich, who's one of the four friends that started this winery back in 2002. Um, and they're right now, um, it's interesting, what we're doing here in the barrel room is he's showing us the capacity of this winery and right now you're growing, a, you're making about 3,500 cases, right? That's the most we've made. Uh, yeah. Some years it's less. Uh, every year the grapes come in yeah. uh, with the amount that the plants produce and so if we hit, if we hit the most we get that. Yeah. But this year was a little less. Yeah, um, it's, it's interesting seeing, um, uh, one thing I always enjoy with going to different wineries is seeing how they configure their barrel room because um, you really get into a challenge of capacity and also being able to move these barrels around. And here actually, um, you were explaining to me this used to be a horse bar, right? That's right. In fact, if you look, uh, it's not easy to see from where we are, but if you look at some of the, the posts that are hidden, the places where the horse is not on is still there. <laughs> and we've improved it, but not entirely. And uh, it, it gives was, a character. Yeah, it, it does. It does. But it also gives it a low ceiling, which means that when we move the barrels, you have to use a hand truck rather than a mechanized forklift. And uh, there's a certain amount of hand labor. So we're kind of doing it old style in a sense. And yeah, it's, it seems that. Um, and, and how is it working with? Uh, um, Obviously, your, your spouse and two other friends. I mean, you've been able to um, have a nice little winery from 2002 well, on. We all have our jobs, and yes. it, it was one of those things like uh, it, it was the our, it was our luck that we started the winery at a time when there was an expansion in Livermore that 
that said, you know, people start wineries, and uh, <laughs> the, 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 that's simplified, but it yeah, was yeah. basically that. But each of us has our uh, our special interests mm -hmm. and talents. I'm I'm the tech guy. I actually have a shirt that says tech support on it with all the little <laughs> things that I do. And uh, you're also the main sort of winemaker in the sense that you're. Um, at least Carol was saying that you were in charge of uh, figuring out what barrels you needed and everything yeah, else. Yeah, I, I handle that kind of stuff. Uh, Pat and Carol handle the sales and events, mm -hmm. uh, and Tom does the vineyard. Yes, and, and the sourcing uh, of and the grapes. And sourcing of the grapes and interacting with the other local vineyards. And we buy nearly all of our grapes from uh, uh, vineyards that are within three miles from here, yeah. from where we're standing right now. And you right have now. quite a um, quite a vineyard here as well. You source, I we, mean, you have a state grown we as well. We get about half of our grapes off of our vineyard. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have three wines that actually uh, are a state in terms of the grapes. Our two ports, our Zin port and our Petit Syrah port, and the Syrah. Okay. Everything else we've had to buy at least some of the grapes from one of our neighbors. Yeah. But our cab, we uh, share a fence line with three of the four vineyards that we uh, buy Cabernet Sauvignon from. So we're we we're, we're pretty parochial, pretty pretty Great. local. Well, we're um, done with our little tour of the barrel room, and we're now going to check out the rest of Bent Creek Winery here in Livermore, California. Everything makes a difference. Yeah. The yeast makes a difference. Uh, the ripeness of the grapes makes a difference. Yeah. The, they produced some interesting, um, you know, the different, barrels. yeah, different Chardonnay. I mean, they were different, mm -hmm. you know, and, and interesting in some ways. If you are, you know, have a, been having a lot of California Chardonnays to try something a little different. Well, Chardonnay's got a wider stylistic variation than most wines. Mm -hmm. uh, we, years ago, you'd have these super heavily oaked Chardonnays. I called them California Retsinas. I didn't yeah. much care for that I particular didn't style. I didn't either. And uh, then nowadays, uh, you'll see Chardonnays. In fact, the one we're selling right now was totally tank fermented. Never oh. saw a stick of wood. No oak flavoring at all. There's that. Then there's a process called malolactic fermentation, which. Uh, changes one acid from another in the wine. That's what gives the Chardonnays that buttery taste. Mm. That's a byproduct of, of that fermentation, just like alcohol is of the basic sugar yes. uh, fermentation. And so, so there's a lot of things Different to play styles, with. Yeah. And everybody has their favorites. And the customers do too. Yeah. We, I've rarely put a Chardonnay out on the counter that you didn't get a group that loved it and a group that hated yeah. it, and they weren't the same people all the time. Well, I like the uh, I like a little bit of oaky this to the Chardonnays, but I agree with you. A while ago, when I used to drink California Chardonnays, they just used to be too overpowering. But now mm -hmm. they've started to get a, light, a little lighter hand, a little more fruit forward. You know, it's, people are people's yeah. tastes are changing, yeah. changing back. When I first came to this valley, uh, Winnie was the uh, dominant winery, and they made. A bunch of beautiful white wines, yeah. Gray Riesling, uh, a, uh, a Muscat, uh, a Pinot Gris, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of these fruity white wines. They were very popular then, yes. back in the middle late seventies, something like that. And then the then all of a sudden nobody liked them anymore, <laughs> yeah. and they're all gone. The, those fields are growing something else now. Yeah, I saw yeah. it today; is lovely. Yeah. And uh, even when it's hot, there's a bit of a breeze. And people who have events out here, uh, if they're not used to the area, always come dressed too lightly for the later part of the evening because it comes up like this and it gets uh, chilly. We're going on vacation together. The four of us will travel. We've, we've been to uh, many. No, you don't. I can handle. I can handle. No problem.